Okay, after watching all the clips from America's Got Talent, I, uh, I'm definitely feeling a lot better. I am. Actually, in spite of what's gone on the last couple of days, a lot of the great stuff has been happening, and honestly, yesterday was feeling a bit, you know, kind of a downer. So, I think I'm going to rectify that by talking about a lot of the good stuff that's happened this week. I mean, some things I have talked about already, you know, just, um, you know, seeing my family, which is great. And I had to see some of my family last night, too, so that was, that's part of my high. I mean, admittedly, my low is the fact that, you know, my parents and I got in an argument, and honestly, this one was pretty bad. Not really a great way to end this last 100 days. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I mean, I have the state of my being addressed tomorrow. So, as you can imagine, I'm actually kind of worried. But, you know, my act of kindness, at least my parents, I mean, here's the thing. I had to do something I didn't want to do, but I did it anyway. It was incredibly stupid, and believe me, I'm going to remember how horrible this is for a long time. But, yeah, that... uh that, uh, that's all the end of that. So, good morning, and, um, happy Thursday, everyone. So, where do I begin? Well, let's talk a little bit about AGT. I'll be honest, all the acts, they were great. But, man, it's interesting. And I've, actually, a lot of the things that I'm going to be talking about today are legit things that I've already talked about. Or I've seen, or I've done, like, videos of in the past. For example, I once did a video about um, how I, oh, after being under a rock practically for five, six years, I actually learned who the Try Guys were. One of the Try Guys is, um, his name was Keith Habsburger. And he's actually also part of the comedy trio called Lou Burger. It's basically like the, uh, uh, a, com a combination of all three people's last names in one, right? And they are on America's Got Talent. Here's the best part, though. Their act was basically a song dedicated to Terry Crews. <laughs> it was amazing. Oh, man. Like, that, oh, wait, that legit put a smile on my face. It did. Like, you know that sort of moment where life can be just so... Not mundane per se, but kind of, but uh, not horrible per se, but just mundane. I, I said that incorrect. I'm sorry. Just like sort of meh, and then you have something, and then you just see something or hear something, or possibly eat something, and you for that brief moment in time you just forget what happened, and then like all is right with the world. And then that high kind of goes away. But for that moment, it works. Like, that was this moment. It was awesome. So, that was, uh, that was definitely something. Um, let's see. What else, like, what else is there to discuss today? Um, another thing I have talked about that I've watched in the past is Central Park. And I've been watching season two so far. Um... So, full disclosure, I think this last episode of Central Park is probably the best episode they've done so far. I'm not even kidding. And here's the thing. With the exception of, you know, Bitsy Brandenham and obviously the narrator, and I'll explain in a minute, we barely see any of the main cast in this. You know, Owen and his family. We never see them. Basically, the way this episode works out is, at the hotel, there's um, there's a mysterious figure called the Shadow, who actually um, you know, goes into people's hotel rooms and you know steals stuff. For the record, this is like a fancy hotel room with like a whole bunch of the suites and stuff. It's actually quite nice, right? Here's the thing, though, the Shadow existed over like fifty six years ago, and. There's this one old cop who has the theory that the shadow is back. And Bitsy Brandenham is going crazy. Like, the shadow's not real. The shadow's not real. And then 
The cop is like, how would you know? And then Bitsy says, I was the shadow. Basically, we get in the Bitsy's backstory a little bit and how no one really ever noticed her. You know, she was, you know, kind of the runt of her family, if you will. And so basically, she was stealing stuff from other people's hotel rooms and from other people's hotel rooms in other hotels just so she'd try and get noticed. However, the joke wound up being on her because her parents died and the Brandon Ham Hotel, you know, went to, went to Bitsy with the reputation of the fact that there's a thief amongst them. So, yeah, it was, um, it was actually quite a great episode, but actually, but believe it or not, basically the cop always sort of knew, but he wanted to make sure. And obviously, you know, you know, Betsy didn't get in trouble or, or anything. And the moral of this episode is all it takes is just one person to notice who you are to make all the difference. And then the episode literally pulls an up. Yeah, the first 10 minutes of Up, this episode does that too. Like, seriously, if you don't feel any kind of emotion after that, my friend, you just do not have a soul. You just will, you just do not have a soul if that's the case. Because holy cow, this was, this was actually, you know, quite good. I mean, here's the thing. Yeah, I probably could have been doing my thoughts on Central Park throughout. I mean, I have talked about my thoughts. Like, after seeing, like, the first, like, season of Central Park, I believe. Did I watch the first season before I did that video? Huh. I forget if I did. I'll have to probably look that up, I guess. But, regardless. Like, I've been watching this show, you know, since it first aired. You know, I saw the, um... I mean, I love how, I mean, it's the people who does Bob's Burgers, and Bob's Burgers is a great show. You know, so, honestly, I kind of knew it was going to be entertaining. You know, the music, I mean, the music is great. Like, I don't know who they get to be. I mean, here's the thing, if I looked it up, huh. If I looked up who the writers of the music are, I'm sure I'd be giving them their praise, their just praise, and they deserve it. But this is just some darn good music. Like, really good music. Like, stuff that, like, seriously, this music is so good sometimes that you really could put this on a Broadway show and it would belong. I mean, it makes sense. Central Park takes place in New York City. New York City also has Broadway. Makes sense. So, yeah. If any of you guys are able to find or watch um, Central Park on Hulu, watch The Shadow. It's good. A really good episode. So, there you go. And, um, one last thing that I most definitely need to talk about. And, folks, I will admit, just because of the title of this of these movie series of this franchise in questions, I am technically going to be cursing here. So if you don't want to see that part, skip to like the 14, 15 minute mark. I don't think I'll be talking about this for that long, but here we go. Um, so with that out of the way, growing up in the 90s, when MTV like was the thing, you know, you had shows like. You know, Beavis and Butthead and all those great music videos and stuff like that. And Daria. You know, stuff like that, right? By the time I became a teenager, the show to watch was Jackass. And again, that's the title of the series. Okay, I'm I'm, I'm just saying what the title of the series is. I'm not if I feel I'm not I'm not legit cursing, that's just this is the title of the series. I'm very sorry. And eventually Jackass got to be so incredibly big that it spawned you know a movie franchise and just my luck when the first jackass movie came out in 2002 i was a mere 12 years old and therefore since it was rated r i was too young to go watch it 
four years go by, actually, which I'm not going to lie. That was a pretty quick four years. And the sequel, Jackass number two, obviously number two is a euphemism for going number two in the bathroom, comes out. And it was still rated R. I was 16 at the time. And therefore, still too young to go see it. Another four years go by. And this was at like when 3D was really starting to be huge. And so the good folks on Jackass tried to market that and call it Jackass 3D. I remember seeing the trailer and I'm like, I must go see this. I mean, I'm definitely old enough to go see in the theater because this is 2010. I'm 20 years old. Yes, I can watch an R-rated movie. Here's the thing. I was in college and I had no access to a car, no access to a car, no way to get to a movie theater. So all three previous Jackass movies, I could not see in the theater. And quite honestly, that is one of the biggest regrets of my life because I mean, I've seen, I've seen all three movies, obviously. Sure I have. And I laugh my head off at everything. In fact, I'm with everyone else. The worst parts of those movies are when the movie or are, are when the movies end. Because I want to see more. And they don't have any more. Which, you know, I mean a movie has to end eventually. We all know this. So I say this because it's a regret that I have that I couldn't watch it in the theater. Because if I did, all three times would have been among the greatest movie experiences I ever had. And sadly, due to the, due to the passage of time, that will forever have eluded me. And I was worried that I would have to live the rest of my life feeling this way. Until just a couple days ago. They're coming out with a fourth Jackass movie called Jackass Forever. Like, this is a sign. This has to be a sign from one of the major for like God or the major forces of the universe or something. Because I never thought I'd probably... And yeah, there's probably a risk to seeing this movie simply because, you know, all the guys are old and therefore the novelty might wear off or something akin to that. I hope... I hope I'm wrong. Like, and believe me, I'm definitely going to, because here's the thing, I always, a few years ago, just out of curiosity, like I went to see Rotten Tomatoes to see how the, all three of the previous movies did. And the first one is like a 42, but it's like, it's the sort of 42, or yeah, it's certainly considered rotten, but maybe the critics weren't necessarily right about this one. And the other two are like, in the 60s, meaning obviously they're better than the first one. In fact, I will admit, as you see all three Jackass movies, they get progressively better. But you know, you could, but you know, in the 60s, it's still considered fresh. Okay. Yeah, they also came out with Dirty Gramp with a Bad Grandpa, but I didn't really have any interest in that because here's the thing: they have Bad Grandpa bits and all other and all the other Jackass movies, and. Those are the things I laugh the least at. So, yeah, I'm not interested in seeing it. But with this, Jackass Forever, oh yeah, I'm going to go watch it. I hope I am in a packed theater with a whole bunch of Jackass fans who are my age or probably a lot older because they saw at the time, you know, the other Jackass movies and obviously the series growing up. So... Yeah, I am going to be there with Gusto. I'm going like Thursday night at like 7 because it's going to be in October. So, you know, def like October, like late October. So right before Halloween. I wonder if maybe I can find some sort of jackass related costume for Halloween. Hmm. I'll have to see about that. But until then... I have seen Jackass forever. I hope to see a lot of people there. Perhaps, perhaps not.
So, all in all, the last couple of days have been rough, but I wanted to take this day to sort of, you know, bring it on back a little bit. You know, give, give everyone something to smile at, you know? Maybe I did you proud. If I didn't, I'm sorry, but other than that, I hope you have a wonderful day. So like, favorite, share, the subscribe button, follow me on social media, turn on on YouTube. I am very hard this video for all of you guys to watch and enjoy for today. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful Thursday. Remember, you guys are on my talker channel. I always be here to lend it in. I always have you back. Take care and make good choices. See ya.